So this P4 video is on resultant force calculations. If you're happy with the concept of resultant force, um, how to work it out, and also the overall effect it has, then you should probably keep watching this one. If you need some help understanding exactly what resultant force is and how it works, then perhaps worth watching the non-calculation resultant force video first. I'll put a link to that on the screen. Okay, so a couple of things we need to look at first. The two main equations from the formula sheet we're going to be using are the red boxed ones here. Um, obviously the second one because it involves resultant force, but it links to change of momentum and sometimes we all have to use a starting and a final momentum in a situation to work out that change. So that's why both those equations tend to be used together. I'm going to be looking at the sort of tougher end of the spectrum in terms of the problems um, in this video. So simple problems involving a single equation I'm not going to look at. If you want to look at those then uh, the GCSE skills um, video on triangle method for rearranging equations would be a good thing to look at and again I'll put a link in the annotations. Uh, so some questions, as I said, well, I only need one of these, but the ones we're going to look at will need to use both of these equations. They'd be the tougher questions in the paper. A couple of reminders about things. Velocity. Uh, you need to remember that velocity is a quantity that has both size and direction. So uh, velocity tells us how fast an object is moving, and it tends to be positive in one direction and negative in the opposite direction. There's a bit of a convention about how that works normally, is that the normal way is that you choose, if you're doing a problem involving up-down motion, you choose up as positive. If it's left-right motion, you choose right as positive, so that's like graph axes. Um, forward, backwards, you'd normally have forward as positive. It doesn't have to be that way around as long as you keep it consistent. Okay, So there's, there's rare occasions where a question will tell you specifically which direction uh, positive um, velocity is. So, for example, if you're given this velocity time graph for a ball being dropped, for example, then because you know that the ball is dropped, it moves downwards, and the velocity on the graph is positive and is getting increasing in size as that goes on, the ball is moving faster and faster downwards after it's been dropped, uh, then you know then that downwards must be positive in this problem. It doesn't tell you directly, but the statement that the ball is dropped and the velocity time graph kind of tell you together that down must be the positive direction of velocity. Okay, one final thing before we get into the problems then, calculating the change of a quantity. Whenever you do the change of any quantity, it's the final value of that quantity minus the starting value, and the change happens between those two situations. Okay, So for an example for momentum here, if we have an object that has an, a starting momentum of 100 kilogram meters per second and ends up with 150, then the change is plus 50. The final, 150, minus the starting, 100, gives us a change of 50. I've added the plus for emphasis here, you wouldn't normally need to do that. And similarly, if the momentum of an object is decreasing, so you start with a momentum of 1000 and you reduce to a momentum of 750, then the change is negative. You do the starting momentum uh, as 1000 in the equation, the final momentum is 750. 750 minus 1,000 is minus 250 kilogram meters per second. Do remember yeah, that momentum has odd units, kilogram meters per second, and also newton seconds are allowed units for momentum. So it has two that could come up, depending on which equation you use to work it out, and we'll see that later on. Okay, so let's look at a problem then. I've put the equations up there in the corner so you can see them, but obviously remember in the paper you're going to have to turn back to find these. So this relates, um, it looks similar to a, an example we looked at in the previous resultant force video when we were just looking at working out the resultant force itself. So the car accelerates from rest with the forces shown for five seconds. What is its final speed? Um, you might want to pause the video here and have a go at this question. And if you do get stuck, because it is quite a hard one, um, then make sure you're clear on which stage uh, I'm about to go through that you got stuck on. Okay. The general idea with all of these problems is that you are trying to identify what the question is asking you and then to find the other two um, quantities in the equation that will help you to do that. So I'm going to use a colour system to highlight this. The quantity we're trying to find will be boxed in red. Any quantities the question has given us will box in green. Things we will need to work out will put a yellow box and as we work them out I'll change the box to green. Hopefully you'll see how that works. Okay, So to start off with, what is its final speed? Now, here's our first interesting thing. In this particular example, speed and velocity uh, are interchangeable. So if you're asked to work out a speed, don't exclude the equations that say velocity. 
if you're asked to work out a speed, you, you will certainly be able to use an equation that says velocity in it instead. Just remember that the speed is just the size of the velocity, so you won't care if it's negative or positive when you get the final answer. You'll just write the number down and meters per second. Okay. So uh, there's our thing we're trying to find. What information have we been given? Well, from the diagram we can work out the resultant force because the 15,000 newton weight of the car cancels out the 15,000 normal reaction force and we're just left with the motive force on the car of 3,000 newtons. So we're ignoring our resistance in that problem, which is with this problem, which is fine if you're not told it. Okay, what else do we know? Well, the question shows us in the text that the time for which the force acts is 5 seconds. And if we're going to work out velocity from using this method, we're going to have to work out the other things. We're going to need to know the mass of the car and its momentum at the end, the final momentum, because that's what we're asked for. The final speed is related to that. And therefore, we're going to have to work out the change in momentum um, as we go through, because we're going to need that to work out what the final momentum is. So these two equations link together. So let's start working on these things. Okay, so the change in momentum, first of all, is easy. So we can change that to green, because we already know the resultant force and the time from our previous working out. So we just take the resultant force of 3,000 newtons, multiply it by the time of 5 seconds, and we get a change of momentum of 15,000 newton seconds. Remember I said before, momentum can have units of kilogram meters per second or newton seconds, and they are the same thing. So 15,000 newton seconds is the same as 15,000 kilogram meters per second. Okay, so now we know that we need to work out the mass. Now mass, you need to remember, this is not on the formula sheet, but you just need to remember that if you have a weight in newtons on Earth, then every 10 newtons of weight comes from one kilogram of mass. That means that the mass is just the weight divided by 10 if we're operating on Earth. So we take the weight of 15,000 newtons, which we can read off the diagram, and we divide it by the strength of gravity on Earth, which is 10, to get 1,500 kilograms of mass. Always remember, if you're doing it on Earth, that which people tend to get confused about which way around it is sometimes, the mass will always be a smaller number than the weight because each kilogram is 10 newtons of weight. So now we can turn the mass green in our equation because we know that. So the final thing we need to do is to work out the momentum. And this is where remembering how, how change of momentum works is very useful. We know the starting momentum is zero. I've underlined in blue in the question the words from rest. Sometimes questions sort of code the information that you need uh, and don't actually give you the numbers. So you've got to watch out for these key phrases. The word from rest means the car is not, not moving to start with. So its starting momentum must be zero. Okay. And so now we know the change in momentum, right? And we know the starting momentum. Then from the equation uh, that w tells us how to work out change in momentum, that which is final minus starting, we can just rearrange that to get the final momentum as the starting momentum plus the change. In this case, that's kind of trivially straightforward because the starting momentum is zero, so the final momentum is just going to be the change of momentum that's taken place since the car started accelerating, which we've already worked out is 15,000 um, kilogram meters per second or 15,000 newton seconds. Okay. So now we can fill. Now we can turn the uh, final momentum green, and now we're nearly there. As as soon as we have a single equation where we know both the other quantities in the equation, we can work out the final quantity. So again, we can take our equation and rearrange it. Velocity equals momentum divided by mass. If you're still unhappy with rearranging, go and watch the triangle video, and you can use that. Okay. So our 15,000 kilogram meters per second momentum divide it by our 1,500 kilograms of mass, and we get a final answer for the speed of the car of 10 meters per second. Okay, now that's a lot of different steps, and they won't necessarily ask a question that um, requires you to do all those steps independently. They may guide you through it. So they might ask you to work out, for example, what the final momentum of the car is in part A of the question, and then use that to work out uh, the velocity in part B. So do look out for um, these multi-part questions where the previous answer might be useful. Worth bearing in mind as well that if you ever get that happening, uh, you get error carried forward marks. So if you make a mistake on the first part, and then use that wrong answer in the second part, as long as you have done the working correctly, uh, you still get some credit. So make sure you show the working. Okay, example two. So in the first example, we were working out a final uh, velocity for the car. This time, um, we've got a car that's braking with a for braking force of 3,000 newtons. And we want to know um, how long it takes for the car to stop if it's moving at 40 meters per second to start with. 
So same thing, let's just fill in the stuff. So we're trying to find time this time. So we've got a different thing that's our red box in the second equation this time rather than the first. What do we know? Well, again, we know resultant force very easily from the car. It's just the braking force because the up and down forces cancel. And uh, we can, again, we're going to have to work out change of momentum in yellow. We need the final momentum uh, minus the starting momentum in this case. So we're going to kind of have to use the... Um, the um, first equation twice. Again, we've got some code in there. Time taken for the car to stop. Well, it's stopping at the at the, in the final situation, which means its final momentum must be zero. Okay, and the starting momentum we're going to need to use the mass times velocity equation to work out. The mass of the car um, we'll work out in a second. The velocity is again given to us in the equation. The starting velocity is 40 meters per second. Mass, same trick as before. We take the weight and divide it by 10. They might give you the mass directly rather than the weight of the car. Um, um, so just be on the lookout for that. Don't convert it unless you need to. And then we use the um, mass times velocity to give us the starting momentum. So our um, mass is 1500 kilograms. Our starting velocity is 40 meters per second. That gives us a starting momentum of 60,000 kilogram meters per second. Okay. So now we know the final momentum and the starting momentum, we know the change of momentum. Now this is an interesting thing, when you put the change of momentum into the equation you get a negative number if you do it properly, because the final momentum is zero and then we subtract the starting momentum of 60,000. That might seem weird but it's going to make sense in a second, because in this question we're, we're um, assuming that positive is to the right. That's because I've put 40 meters per second, the speed that the car is going to the right, into my equation as positive, so that we've already done that assumption. So all we have to do is be careful when we do the final step, where we do time is change of momentum divided by resultant force, which is the bottom equation rearranged. Use the 60, 000, minus 60,000 from the change of momentum. And the resultant force is minus 3,000 as well, because the resultant force is pointing in the opposite direction to our positive direction, which we've said is right. The resultant force is pointing left, so it counts as minus 3,000. So when you do minus 60,000 divided by minus 3,000, you get a time of 20 seconds. You'd expect the time to be positive. It wouldn't really make any sense for the time to be negative. So in this case, those two minuses cancel out. It's not going to be the end of the world in this problem if you just forget the minuses altogether. You'll still get the right answer. But you have to be very careful, because you'll see in our final example we're going to look at, um, the, the pluses and the minuses we do need to keep track of. Okay, So make sure you can follow through all those steps, rewatch it if you're not entirely sure, um, and uh, hopefully if you worked it out you got the correct answer. So our final example we're going to use right, is a ball bouncing off a wall. So I've got two diagrams here, you may get the diagrams or you may get a written description. The diagrams will be very helpful, useful to sketch them to start with if you haven't, uh, if you haven't got them is a 0.5 kilogram ball moving sideways into the wall at 4 meters per second and then it bounces off and rebounds at 2 meters per second. Okay, We're not going to worry about the up and down motion of the ball, we're just going to assume that we're, we're, it's bouncing off horizontally. Okay, So this time we're asked what is the average force the wall exerts on the ball. The word exerts just means pushes on basically, so how much force does the wall push on the ball with. Okay, so let's do our procedure again. This time we're trying to find resultant force. So second equation again, but a different quantity. So that's now boxed in red. What do we know? Well, the question tells us the time it acts for, 0 0.05 seconds. And we're clearly going to have to work out the change in momentum again. So we're going to need the final momentum and the starting momentum. Now in this question, uh, we've got less working out to do in this second part because the question has given us the mass of the ball. And obviously it's the same at the start and the end, so that's easy. And it's given us the starting velocity and the final velocity. But we do have to be a little bit careful, okay? which means we can work out the starting and final momentum. So I've just put the equation down twice because we need to work out both of them. It's not as simple in some ways as the car question previously because we knew the final momentum would be zero because the car was coming to a stop. Here the ball is moving in the start and the end situation, and so neither momentum is going to be zero. So let's just substitute the numbers in. So the starting momentum, if we go with our positive is to the right convention, is 0 0.4 kilograms for the mass multiplied by plus 4 meters per second, giving us a starting momentum of plus 2 kilogram meters per second. The final momentum, however, the ball has rebounded off the wall, so the velocity is pointing in the 
opposite direction to that it was going in originally, which means it is negative. So our final momentum is 0 0.5 times minus 2, giving us minus 1 kilogram meters per second. So when we put those numbers into the change of momentum um, equation, our final momentum is minus 1. Our starting momentum is 2, but we do minus 1 minus another 2 to give us minus 3 kilogram meters per second, because that's what um, the um, equation tells us to do. So the, it's, it's a bigger change of momentum than you might think. The common mistake here is to get a change of momentum of 1, because people just put the, um, the final momentum in as positive. Okay, that would be what would be happening if the ball was sort of breaking through the wall and slowing down in the process, then it would be still going in the same direction. Uh, and if it slowed down to two meters per second, that wouldn't actually be much of a change in its momentum. It's decreased a bit, but it's still going in the positive direction. This is a bigger change of momentum because of the bounce. Okay, so we now have uh, the change of momentum and the time, so we can rearrange the equation for the resultant force. Um, it's equal to the change of momentum divided by the time. Put the numbers in, minus 3 divided by 0 0.05 seconds gives us a force of minus 60 newtons. And again, there's a significance to the negative number here. The question is asking us to work out what the average force the wall exerts on the ball is. The wall is going to be pushing the ball to the left. And so the force should be negative because it's pointing to the left, the negative direction in our problem. Okay, so that's three examples of um, quite complex resultant force calculations. They won't get more difficult than that. Obviously, some things to look out for. We've used completely standard units here. Do look out for your unit conversions just in case as well. Um, and just keep an eye on which direction your velocities and your momentums are in so that you can make sure you get those completely right.